Good morning, everybody. Welcome to your daily crypto news. It is Friday, February 2nd, 2024. My name is Matt. You can reach me at matt at dailycryptonews.net. I have some bad news. My bad news is, is I was recording an interview uh, that this morning that was going to be the show today that ended up being late. And then we had technical difficulties at the end, so we got cut off. And then since we got cut off, the upload from the interviewee's side uh, did not upload, so we had to go back and forth via email and it is still uploading as we speak. So most of my morning was wasted uh, doing that. So I apologize. It's been two days with no real crypto news. Uh, so I, I really want to say I apologize. It is not normal that we get this. It's just it seems like sometimes the um, fate converges and we have just a cluster of all kinds of stuff. But that's what happens when you're one person and you do daily news every day and you have done so for the past I don't know what is it four years three years four years now and so <laughs> it's it, you're bound to have these days anyway i hope you guys are sticking with me uh we do have asia focus today and by the way are you watching masters of the air new show on apple tv plus a show about the 100th bomb group we actually had a restaurant over here next to cleveland hopkins airport called the 100th bomb group it was pretty damn cool i just finished episode three yesterday good show don't think it's as good as Band of Brothers or The Pacific, all three of which was done by Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. Uh, this is definitely the third in ranking of, I think, goodness of them. But Band of Brothers and The Pacific was so epic that even if it was worse than both of those, it still is a great show. If you're watching it, let me know. Matt at DailyCryptoNews.net. And here is Asia Focus. Hello everyone, welcome back to Asia Focus, a weekly section of Daily Crypto News. I'm Sarah, and all emails, feedback, opinions are welcome to Sarah at dailycryptonews.net. Samsung, a blockchain-based social karaoke platform in South Korea, suffered an exploit on Saturday and lost 730 million of its native token SSX, which amounts to $11.58 million according to its announcements. The hacked amount included 504 million undistributed SSX tokens, which were planned for circulation by the end of 2025, and 226 million SSX tokens Samsung Foundation held and were already part of its current circulation. The platform has reported to the National Police Agency for an investigation into hacking incident and said it will alert Interpol as well. Something is also tracing the attacker with the help of local blockchain entity Clayton Foundation and Interpol partner firm Uppsala Security. Something said it plans to freeze the assets and take a legal action upon identifying the perpetrator. Upbit, Bitham, and CoinOne has halted their deposit and withdrawal. SSX token as of February 2nd on Friday is $0.01375 according to CoinMarketCap and it's 18.56 Korean won according to Bitham Korea. The UK government is investigating Jen Wen, a British Chinese woman, for laundering 6 billion worth of Bitcoin from a crime committed in China. The crypto funds came from a multi-year wealth management crime conducted by a woman called Yeti Zhang. Zhang reportedly stole the money between 2014 and 2017 in China and converted the funds to Bitcoin before arriving in London under a false identity. Wen helped Zhang to convert Bitcoin into cash, jewelry, and other big ticket items. Remember late 2023, we had these pig butchering scams by Chinese businessmen who stole around 100 million in crypto? These are all very long term scams involving romance, fake returns, human trafficking, etc. etc. There are a lot of podcasts and news articles about it, so please check it out. And the stories are pretty ridiculous. I know a lot of things in our lives happen online, 
but you have to get back to basic to avoid this kind of scams. It's still so important to follow manual, offline, strict rules to avoid these scams and when dealing with your funds. When you listen to these quick butchering scam cases, you wouldn't believe how long they invested into these victims, but also how easy these victims fall into scams. Just because they have interacted with the scammers for a very long time, even though they have never met them, even though they have never done anything with them in real life, of course, it doesn't mean that if you have done anything with someone in real life, you can trust them. But still, they've only connected online for a very long time. Maybe you went a little personal in conversations. That's the only reason they kind of trusted these scammers. Unknown websites, strange signups, leaving custody to strangers, all these things should just be a no-go at all times. I know when we are reporting these scam cases, it's kind of already done deal. So I, I know that people don't really care about it so much and we will think that, okay, I'll be careful about it. But this pig butchering scams, when you read about it a little more, it's actually quite easy for people to fall into this scam. So that's why we're reporting once again, just for you to be extra, extra cautious. The Securities and Exchange Commission SEC of Thailand is transitioning toward more crypto-friendly regulations. Previous rules had limited retail investors to 300,000 baht, approximately 8,400 US dollars, per offering in asset-backed ICOs. Under the revision this month on this rule, retail investors now can invest in digital token backed by real estate or infrastructure without that limit bold move. Some other recent developments in Thailand crypto scenes, Thailand's SEC has chosen not to allow a spot Bitcoin ETF just like Korea. And mid-January, Binance Thailand launched and now they facilitate Thai bot trading fairs. It's not so often that we hear a lot of crypto related news from Thailand, so there was the wrap. Hong Kong's Office of the Privacy Commissioner of Personal Data raided six World Coin Orb operators across the city on Wednesday, warning the public not to share its biometric data with the company. It said it is concerned that World Coin's operation in Hong Kong, quote, involves serious risks to personal data privacy that may violate the city's personal data privacy ordinance. Any person or organization as a data user in Hong Kong that controls the collection, holding, processing, or use of personal data must comply with the requirements under the PDPO and relevant data protection principles, end quote. Privacy Commissioner for Personal Data Ada Chung said. The PCPD statement also said that before providing any biometric data, citizens should consider the following issues in relation to the relevant organization. First, the legitimacy for collecting biometric data. Two, the extent and purpose of collection of the biometric data. Three, the intended use of those data and the classes of persons or organizations to whom the data will be disclosed and transferred. Four, the retention period of the biometric data. And five, the safety precautions taken for the protection of the biometric data. WorldCoin has said that the biometric data never leaves its scanning orbs and is processed locally before being permanently deleted. This is just a proactive investigation, by the way. Not that WorldCoin has used people's private data in other purposes than they already informed in advance. But do we really care? This kind of news think that, wow, WorldCoin did something wrong or our privacy data is in risk. but. I get so annoyed by this consent pop-ups on every single website ever since GDPR was initiated. It's not like I don't care about people unrightfully using my data, but it's already out there. I know everybody has some sort of privacy data in their database. I don't even know how to exercise if I were to spot the incidents and make them stop. Who read all the rules when you sign up to something as well to begin with, right? I bet not so many people who signed up to WorldCoin and get some WorldCoin know where the data is going to be used, not to mention all the safety precautions taken for protection of their data. 
Maybe I'm dumb. Maybe I'm lazy. What do you think? I would love to know your opinion. Sarah at dailycryptonews.net. That's all for today. Now let's get into those crypto prices. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. And the time is 10.21 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fear of Greed is at 57. We are neutral. Still inching toward greedy. When we get to extreme greed, that is when shit hits the fan. And we try to take profits, but then we become greedy and we never sell our coins. And then the bull market is over and we are holding bags for the next four years. Like most of us have done cycle after cycle. It is just a sad state of affairs. Bitcoin sitting at... $42,987 up almost, uh, um, is that 0.7%? It's up 0.7% in 24, up around 4% in 7. Ethereum's at $2,305, up 0.3%. Tether's number 3, Binance is at 302, up 0.4. And Solana's up 4.25% at $193. Did I not tell you there was a buy opportunity yesterday? Guys, if you're not listening to me, it's because you're listening to me. This is not financial advice. However, <laughs> that was a buy opportunity. Running off the top 10, we have XRP, USDC, Cardano, Avalanche. I told you again, it is up 7.4% in 24 hours or 12.8 in 7. It's at 36.17, where I told you yesterday, buy opportunity. No one listens to me. Nobody listens to me. I'm telling you, I'll be calling this shit now. Sell it. <laughs> Not financial advice. And Dogecoin is number 10. The total market cap is sitting at $1.65 trillion up 0.55%. We have a Bitcoin dominance of 51.1 and an ETH dominance of 16.8. And that was our show today. And again, I apologize for the last two days of shows. Yesterday, I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Anatoly Yakovenko, the founder of Solana. And I hope that you always enjoy Sarah, aka JK Remote, with Asia Focus. If you do speak Korean, she does a completely in Korean channel it's called DCN Korea, Daily Crypto News Korea. She also has a YouTube channel. We're trying to expand. Hey, by the way, we do want to expand. If you speak Spanish, if you're a Spanish speaker, native, please, and you can speak English as well, reach out to me, Matt at DailyCryptoNews.net. We want to expand to Latin America or Spain or any, any, anywhere that speaks Spanish is what we're trying to say. Anyway, I hope you have a great weekend. Until Monday, happy hodling, everyone. <laughs>